Happy Thursday, everyone. Welcome to Geeks Are Sexy. I'm Jason LaDuke, taking over the fourth Thursday of the month for Michelle Davis, who hosts this show the rest of the weeks of the, the rest of the weeks of the month. And we are back. I know I haven't been around for a while. If you want to know the story behind that, hit me up on social media or something like that, because I don't want to take time away from our guest to talk about my things. So, but we are so glad you're doing better. I'm, I'm, gl I'm glad I'm doing better, too. Yeah. But please hit me up if you want to know the story. Before we get into our first guest, I do want to let everybody know, this month our show is actually being sponsored. We've got our first sponsor, and we're being sponsored by 5AM Global, which is a strategic marketing agency that helps companies and brands achieve exponential growth of their revenue right here in Las Vegas. Um, owned by our good friend Sean Willis, who's been a guest on the show a couple of times. And... What I want to talk about the 5M Global does that's so great is branding. And not just your logo or your marketing collateral, all that kind of stuff. What they'll really do is sit down and understand why you started this company, help you develop that culture fit, help you develop that mission statement, that description if you need that, or if you've already got that figured out, help you turn that into really great branding. So thanks to our friends at 5AM Global this month for sponsoring the show. And now I want to introduce our first guest, Suzanne Hobbs, who's here talking about Safe Haven. Thank you for being here, Suzanne, today. Um, Suzanne is an Idaho native who moved to Las Vegas a few years ago. You're going to tell us about all about why you did that. But up in Idaho, you were a news reporter, so be gentle on me <laughs> as, I try to, as I try to do my show here. Uh, but you're a news reporter and an anchor, and you left that career behind to do what you're going to talk about today. And I think that's going to be great. You're also the author of a Amazon best-selling children's book called The Hunger Snake. We're going to talk a little bit about that. You've been on Oprah. Yes. And you were telling us how this is much better than Oprah. This is a big deal compared to Oprah. Hear, yes. me, na hear me now, believe me later, audience. <laughs> and um, you've also been named one of the most, the hundred most inspiring women in the world. Yes. Thank you for being here today. Thank you so much for joining us on Geeks Are Sexy this month. Absolutely. I'm really excited to be here because any chance that I get to talk about the safe haven law and make sure that everyone knows about the law, it's a win. So thank you for having well, me on. Well, tell us all about it. But before you get to the nuts and bolts of safe haven... You came across this. This really changed your life in the year 2000. Yes. So tell us that story, and then you can tell us about the nuts and bolts of, of the safe haven law okay. here in Nevada. All right. So I was living in Idaho Falls, Idaho in October mm -hmm. of 2000. I was an investigative television news reporter, and I got a tip from a cop that a body of a newborn baby was found dead in a dumpster. Mm -hmm. So my photographer and I rush over to the scene, and we see the crime scene tape being put across the alley. We watch the police and the man from the funeral home and the, the investigators right. taking the body of a baby wrapped in a towel out of the dumpster, putting it in the van for the funeral home to go have an autopsy done. And at the time, I was married. We could not have children. We were considering mm -hmm. adoption, and I was thinking, I would have taken that child. Anyone would have gladly taken mm -hmm. that child. So I got an exclusive interview with that girl. They found out it was a teenage girl who mm -hmm. hid her pregnancy from her dad. The dad then told me that there was this law called a safe haven law. Mm -hmm. I had never heard of the safe haven law before. And he said, Idaho should have had this law a long time ago. And then maybe my daughter would have used that law and wouldn't sure. now be facing criminal charges for throwing her baby in a dumpster. Yeah. So I made that my mission to get the safe haven law passed in Idaho. Mm -hmm. And about two years later, my husband and I were on the adoption list to adopt a baby. Mm -hmm. And incredibly, the state of Idaho Health and Welfare chose us mm -hmm. as the parents of the fifth baby surrendered under that safe haven law. So Lily is now almost 16 years old. Yeah. And fortunately, her birth mother made a brave and beautiful decision mm -hmm. to surrender Lily at a hospital a few days after she was born. So I'm very thankful that, that this little cool story has happened, and I now advocate for it 100% all the time. It's, it's amazing when something like that can impact our lives in such a way where it's not, it's not just, wow, that was impactful, but that was so impactful. I want to get involved. And, and then to even go further and say, I, I want to I wanna bring one of these children into, into my life as yeah. well uh, to be part of my family. So, so inspiring. So that's your story, how you got here. Tell us about the Nevada Safe Haven Law. Tell us about kind of the nuts and bolts of Safe Haven. Yeah, so the law varies from state to state, but in every state, you can safely surrender your newborn at mm -hmm. a hospital, and that is the case here in Nevada as well. Okay. So you can uh, hand off your baby to anyone. It has to be physically, the baby needs to be physically handed off 
to someone that works at that hospital. You can also hand the baby okay. off at fire stations as well. Okay. Um, any medical office. So it's important that um, that if you decide that you cannot keep your child, mm-hmm. you know, within the first few days of birth, that you are able to legally surrender that baby okay. under that law. And you can turn around and walk away, no questions asked. Okay. And what is the time frame? It's usually 30 days. 30 days. Yeah. Here in Nevada, yeah, it's 30, 30 days. days. Yeah. If you're watching somewhere else, it may be different, so check. But but it's typically 30, it's typically 30 days. days. And you can go to the National Safe Haven Alliance dot org. It's kind okay. of a long name, but there's a, a map of the United States. Mm-hmm. The National Safe Haven Alliance dot org. Okay. Click on that map. And you can learn the law. It varies from state to state. Yeah, we'll put that in the show notes so you guys yeah. don't have to try to remember that. But we'll put that up. We'll link. We'll put that link in so you guys can just click on that if you're interested in that. Um, so 30 days here in Nevada. That's typical. But please look before before you do this. And here in Nevada, you must hand it to a person. Yes. That's right. Yeah. So you can't. You, don't it's, leave the it's baby not, outside. It's, of, it's uh, not like TV. You can't just leave it on the doorstep. No. So so you so to to be eligible for the safe haven law you really, you have to have it for a person but if you go to a hospital if you go to a fire station they're all trained if you tell them what you're doing yeah. they know just to take it and that that you don't have to answer any right. questions. Sadly, we still find babies abandoned in places that are unsafe, mm-hmm. and either the baby has died or the baby is still alive, mm-hmm. but we don't want to have to try to find where these babies are. Just hand them off, no questions asked, walk away right. knowing you did the right, right. thing. So, But we, we've we saved over 4,000 babies from this law. In Nevada? In the United States. In the United States. In over 20 okay. years. Yeah, over 4,000 babies have That's been great. safely surrendered and then adopted into loving homes. That's which great. Is great. Yeah. That's wonderful. Now, the next step, Every state has their individual law. Yes. So what's the next step for safe haven laws? I would personally love to see the law become more federal. So okay. the education, so the law can become the same in all of the states. Mm-hmm. And it's easier to educate when it's the same. And then we can get more funding to help educate because I want this edu- I want some education in schools as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I want signs in every bathroom stall at all the you know restaurants and convenience mm-hmm. stores and you know airports but everybody needs to know about this law because you really don't know who's hiding a pregnancy you don't know who's just had a baby and realizes i can't do this mm-hmm. and sadly parents are making wrong sad heartbreaking decisions yeah, that impact not only the baby's life but their life forever as well forever yeah yeah, yeah that's um so that's that's what we're trying to do and how can people how can they Get involved to help if they want to. If they want to help with that campaign, Great. always looking for volunteers. You can reach okay. out to us on our Facebook page at the National Safe Haven Alliance dot org, and you can just message us or comment. And we're always looking for people who want to help set up booths, who want to just promote it through their okay. social media. Anything you can do, you know, sharing this podcast is going to be valuable. But just let okay. people know about the Safe Haven Law. Well, no, and that's something Oprah never did for you, did she? She that's never. Right. She never gave you. She never gave you a video you could put on your Facebook page, I did she? It. So, so uh, sorry, Oprah. Don't don't ruin my life. I know you're powerful. Um, okay, so that so we talked about Safe Haven Law. And that's really what you came on to talk about. But also, what is very interesting to me is you are an Amazon best-selling author yes. of The Hungry Snake. Yep, I wrote and a great children's book and, about this. And tell us about The Hungry Snake. Tell us how you got started with the idea of writing a book, and tell us about what you learned while writing a book. It was quite challenging, and I'm glad I did it, and I would encourage anyone that has a story to tell to mm-hmm. get your book published. I did some self-publishing with a company out of New York, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, but, so the book, it's a bedtime story that I made up for Lily one night, mm-hmm. and it became her favorite story, and it's not about the safe haven law, but I have a page in the back that explains a little bit okay. about the safe haven law, so I'm using this as a tool, but it's just a cute little story for kids mm-hmm. and a newborn to maybe age about 10, okay. and it's available on Amazon, and yes, it did really well in its first few weeks. I had a lot of great support, and so um, it actually beat out J.K. Rowling and R.L. Stein in the number one spot on Amazon children's books in a couple categories. Take that, J.K. Rowling right. and uh, R.L. Stein. Okay. Goosebumps, right? I think. I don't know. Those were a little Goosebumps. after my time, but I have I have read all the Harry Potter books. So again, J.K. Rowling, don't ruin my life. I love your books. That's right. So, so. you can get The Hungry Snake on Amazon or my website, SuzanneHobbs.com. There's a link there. But the proceeds that I make as an author on sales of this book then help me promote the safe haven mm-hmm. loss. So if you buy a copy of this book or two, then it helps me promote okay. the loss. So we're not going to tell you what happens to the hungry snake. Go buy the book. The book is called The Hungry Snake. You can get it exclusively on Amazon, yes. right? Exclusively on Amazon. So if you're a prime customer, go take care of it now. It'll be here like in an hour, yeah. right? Yeah. So um, that's great. So you are the first of two guests who are Amazon best-selling authors on the show this week. And yeah. that's, that's amazing. So last thing, tell us who you want to connect with. And tell us how they can reach you as we wrap up. Okay. I'm al- always looking for donations to the National Safe Haven Alliance.org. So if you have any funds that you want to donate to help us uh, get our public service, all of our messaging out there. 
TV commercials. We want okay. to be out there. Um, if there's an opportunity to have me come and speak at a conference mm -hmm. of any sort, I would be happy to do that. What, and you what can find of, me. What kind of conferences would you be looking to speak at? Women's groups, you okay. know, law enforcement groups, okay. right? Anybody, but truly it's, it's anyone who is passionate about families, passionate about children. Um, but it, you know, a lot of women's groups and organizations and things, but it's a very powerful and inspirational story about Lily's adoption and the safe haven law. And so I love Great. to do my public speaking. You can find me at SuzanneHobbs.com. Okay, SuzanneHobbs.com. You have great social media. Do you yeah. want to promote your Instagram? You bet. Um, Instagram and Facebook is SuzanneHobbs365 because I'm promoting Safe Haven 365 mm -hmm. days a year. So Absolutely. Find me and follow me. All right. Well, thank you for tuning in. Stick around for the next segment. We have Christine Curtis from Social Booth LV coming up. Stay right here. This is Geeks Are Sexy. I'm Jason LaDuke.